The city of Bendigo has fine examples of gold boon architecture. Ornately decorated buildings reflect the wealth of the era. The School of Mines and Mechanics Institute building, now housing Brit, were built between 1854 and 1890. Roman arches and pilasters support a powerful building adorned with Greek urns, bold lion heads and ornately topped capitals. The Greek Revival flat columns and balustrades echo European styles and decadent floral wreaths embellish the hard lines. Bendigo Law Courts were originally erected in 1892 up until 1896. George W. Watson was the architect and the contractors were McCulloch and McAlpine. The grand building is surrounded with Roman arches and Greek Revival flat and rounded pilasters. These pilasters were made by machine and later added onto the building as a render. Striking Greek faces guard the archways into the building. Magnificent line heads symbolising power adorn many of the pillars. The bay-like leaves woven around the curve of the arches were painstakingly carved into each frame. Four magical green griffins guard each lamp post, which is decorated flamboyantly with leaves and vines and topped with a crown. A fitting mate to the law courts is the post office. This glorious building was also designed by G.W. Watson and built between 1883 and 1887, prior to the law courts. The 43 metre high clock tower boasts a six bell carillion. The facades are beautifully decorated with leafy panels, balustrades, arches and the Corinthian pilasters are capped with delicately carved capitals. The rendered facades are an excellent example of the Franco-German Renaissance revival style. The slate mansard roof is finished with iron ridging and finials. Next we have the Bendigo RSL Memorial Military Museum. It was built in 1918. It was erected by the people of Bendigo to commemorate the soldiers who fought in the Great War. The former site was the Hustlers Royal Reserve Gold Mine. Not far away is the majestic Shamrock Hotel. This is the third on the site and this version was built in 1897 by the contractors Baxter and Boyne. Philip Kennedy, a Bendigonian, designed this monumental structure. This four-storied brick building displays decoratively rendered facades with urns, balustrades and pilasters. The mansard roof, a four-sided roof with two slopes each side, allows for an attic room and is ornately decorated with slate tiles. The tower roof is magnificent with scale-like tiles, drapes of floral fruit and laden wreaths and iron lace works around the flagpole. Across the road from Roslyn Park, side by side, are the former Colonial Bank and Bendigo Mining Exchange buildings. The bank was built in 1887 by N. Longstaff & Co. and designed by Varlin. It became the National Bank in 1918, up until 1993. The Mining Exchange building has quite exquisite carvings on the pilasters. Fierce griffin-like creatures skulk in each arch spandrel. Elaborate classical capitals atop the Corinthian columns and ram's heads are decorated depicting the old gold that we grew prosperous on, sheep. Plain and ornate medallions support many of the tiers on the building. Gruesome faces rest between the leaf and scrolls of the capitals. The Bendigo Town Hall was originally designed by G. A. Fletcher and was built in 1859. In 1883 to 85, there were major extensions by architect Varlin. This mannerist style, which copies the Italian style of the 1500s, started out 
as a two-storey building. The pillars support a variety of deep broken pediments. There are many shapes of windows, including round. The classical facades, towers and mansard roof were added to complete this grand building. The shield with the horse and bull are very reminiscent of the Roman and Greek statues and two muscular naked men crouch under the weight of the clock. Bendigo is so lucky to have such a magnificent example of architecture. <laughs>